Hey guys, real quick before we get to this video, I want to give a shout out to my new video podcast, Watch and Listen. It's done with uh, the master watchmaker, Cameron Weiss, and it's all about watches. The show is topical, so you can explore topic by topic and see what you're interested in. We have uh, special guests, and it airs every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Eastern. Hit the link in the description and uh, check it out. If you're into watches like I am, I guarantee you will be into this show. Thanks. Well, a good morning, everybody. Welcome to the canyons where it is a beautiful day. And let's face it, even if it wasn't a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day because I'm in the 4GT. Yeah, buddy. Uh, after we went to VIR last year to film Drive on NBC Sports, and uh, we had like three hours of racetrack time, and Chris Harris got to do the GT, which I actually think was this very car, and I got to do the NSX, which, no complaints, but after that, I had pretty much resigned myself to never being able to drive the GT, and that was okay, because they were sold out, and it was just one of the unattainables, and yet, I got a phone call last night saying, I can get you seven hours tomorrow, unsupervised, with a GT, and here we are. Unbelievable. Um, this particular GT is sort of like the Village Bicycle. 6,600 miles on this. Probably the highest mile GT around. But, uh, man, is it... It's exciting. I feel... You feel like you're part of history being in this car or something. So, I, as many of you know, was such a big fan of uh, the 2004 to 2006 GT. In my opinion, that is one of the top uh, three or four road cars ever made. Now that car was uh, uh, designed to be sort of a throwback to the original GT40 and to commemorate uh, Ford's centennial, the 100 years of Ford. This car, completely different goal, okay? So even though it shares uh, a name with that car, the goals are the same. This car, 2016 was the 50th anniversary of Ford's overall win at Le Mans uh, in 1966 against Ferrari, the very famous uh, Ford-Ferrari battle, right? So this car was built, designed as a race car, LMGTE class race car, and in 2016, uh, this car uh, was, oh, was it 2016? Yeah. Um, it finished uh, first, third, fourth, and ninth in class. Now the old GT, um, or the, the, the 2004 to 2006 GT, was not a particularly successful race car. Although it was one of the best street cars ever, and it has uh, it has really made a name for itself as a standing mile, half mile, sort of tuner car, big power, very durable. This car is an endurance racer, and it is very clear that the road car version of it is much more like a road-going Ford RS200 or a homologation kind of uh, rally car. It's clearly a homologation race car and not necessarily a luxury good uh, in the way that a Pagani or um, even a, a Porsche 918 would be uh, a luxury good. Um, this car is as light as possible. I got a variety of weights looking up. I got anywhere from 3,050 to 3,200 pounds wet. Uh, while trying to look up the specs in this car yesterday. But it's interesting uh, size. So it's 187 inches long. So it's an inch shorter than the Mustang, current Mustang. It's 78.9 inches wide, which is the same width as an Explorer. And it is 43.7 inches high in high mode, which is the same as the front leg room of an F-150. This car is low and it is wide. And um, although if I had a passenger in here, uh, our arms would be getting in the way, um, I'm actually basically as comfortable as I was in the old GT. My head just brushes the ceiling. Um, when you sit in the position, the seat itself is fixed and you pull a strap here to adjust the pedal box and the steering wheels around you. So it actually works out for how I like to sit. Um, all your main controls, blinkers, wipers, lights, volumes, track selection is on the steering wheel. It's very driving focused, obviously. And the sync uh, system is roughly the same as what you get with Fords, uh, with all the rest of the Fords. Um, every material in here is uh, lightweight, purposeful, it's carbon. Um, there is some leather, there's some plastic. It's not 
the most luxurious materials at all costs. It is the lightest and most functional materials at all costs. Um, so that's and speaking of all costs, yeah, it's uh, it's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's it's no joke. I'm not going to dwell on price. They're sold out. People were happy to pay it. They made application videos and waited in line. So forget the price. Um, I think we should see how it drives. Full throttle 
I don't know if they call it overboost in this car, but it's certainly what it feels like you're getting. automatic transmission if you want to do that. I got stuck in a traffic jam this morning that lasted about an hour and a half and uh, and it was it was nice. Hooked up my Bluetooth phone, listened to some music and it was okay. The radio wasn't great but it certainly got the job done for race car. Likewise the trunk which is super duper small but I managed to assemble my camera equipment and, uh, and fit it all in here for this shoot so it won't fit my camera case, but I was able to make use of that trunk a little bit. There is no storage in this part of the cabin at all. So my water bottle's wedged over here against the door. I'm gonna turn right, right? Don't worry, don't worry. We're gonna get back to the good part in a second. It takes a while to get used to these uh, steering wheel mounted uh, blinkers, but kind of fun once you're on it. Race car, race car. Okay, now we're gonna go to a good section that you all are probably familiar with. Here we go. Like the old car, this one's got long legs. Nice long legs. The NSX 
and the GTR's V6s both have this kind of turbine whoop, whoop, even, right? This is a, a rougher, cannier. I don't want to say clattery. Clattery is the wrong word, but it's less smooth and more rough and mechanical. Believe it or not, I mean that as a compliment. so it doesn't get slick and that starts right here on the hill. It goes through the gears fast. It does zero to 60 in three, two, quarter mile in like 11, which is very fast, but that's not what this is about. <laughs> it's about carry, carry that speed. Such a it's a it's a focused machine. Wow. When you go over certain bumps, it feels you get a little like just a little rattle, but it's not really a rattle in the sense of like bad build quality. When you build stuff out of completely carbon fiber, sometimes lighter the impression that it's cheaper, but it's actually stronger, it's just not as insulated, and so this car doesn't have a whole lot of insulation, so you hear a little more in the outside world.
it's got sort of a McLaren vibe to it. Similar. But believe it or not, even tighter and even more planted at the front. thing does is it really complements my driving style you have to have slow hands and I tend to have slow hands and you have to be smooth on and smooth off to manage the front back weight transfer and it really seems to reward that my kingdom for a day the racetrack with one of these but I am a beggar and I cannot be choosy and so I had to give a shout out and a thank you to you know who at SVT that that made that call and got me in this car today um, it is a treat. Um, the car is spectacular. Um, it's it, it, it's its presence on on the street and when parked is really unlike any other car at any other price. It really is aggressive. Uh, it has a great stance and a great look. It's very comfortable. The air conditioning is blowing nice and cold on me right now. And oh my God, is it fast and and exhilarating to drive. That's that is a, a truly. Um, special experience so thank you to the people at Ford who arranged this this day for me I, I do appreciate it and thank you for watching and I will see you 